Cowabunga. and gentlemen to the second annual Clemson Real Dialogue Golden Reels. Over the past year we have watched 147 movies to bring it up to a total of 349 movies since we formed as a club, clocking in at a whopping 689 hours. We've watched movies from 237 directors, 37 countries, 10 decades, and more than 10 languages. And even though we've seen a lot of absolute bangers, only a few select films will take home that sweet, sweet CRD gold. Now let's introduce our Best Picture nominees. Our first Best Picture is one of my favorites. It blurs the line between reality and illusion perfectly. It's been a major inspiration for Darren Aronofsky and his work, prominently referenced in movies like Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream, and it proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that animation is not just for kids. Because if your kids are watching this, they need therapy. It can be a tough watch for some, but for those who make it through, it can be very profound. Our first nominee is Perfect Blue. For our next Best Picture, we had something a bit more unconventional. Anyone from this club knows we have a complicated past with a certain director, ever since a June 2020 double feature that went horribly, horribly wrong. And even though most of us have fully sworn off the 1979 nightmare that is her Razorhead, that didn't stop us from delving more and more inside the twisted but mesmerizing mind of David Keith Lynch. With a movie that is simultaneously a critique of Hollywood, an intriguing look at the power of dreams, and a confusing story that makes Memento easy to understand, we have our second nominee, Mulholland Drive. Our July Best Picture comes from our most watched director, Hayao Miyazaki. Since we started our journey into the vivid mind of cinema's greatest animator, each movie of his has shown how animation can be stretched beyond its limits. And even though we've fallen in love with the fictional worlds he's created on screen, this one remains his most grounded. It's made new fans of several people from club, with two of us having it in our top 15 movies of all time. In a story that celebrates those who are passionate about their craft while touching on life, love, and doing the most with the time we have here, our third nominee is The Wind Rises. For August, our best picture told a story about anxiety, the internet, and the adolescence of a teenage girl, all despite being written and directed by a nearly 30-year-old man who got a start on YouTube. And even though he's outside of the key demographic that would so earnestly relate to this movie, Bo Burnham's experience with the ugly side of the internet would help craft a film that expanded on the term coming of age and gave modern teenagers a way to feel seen in a world that consistently undervalues their work. Our fourth nominee is Eighth Grade. 
Our September Best Picture is my favorite movie of all time. It's a blast from start to finish, and there's a never a dull moment, much like CRD itself. In an age littered with superhero movies, this stands out as a deep family drama aimed at kids, but it still presents mature themes like death, divorce, idolatry, and most importantly, heroism. This movie broke the record for most zoomies won in a single month by a substantial margin, although it has since been broken by our most recent Best Picture. Our fifth nominee is The Incredibles. Our next Best Picture is another superhero flick, but one that pushed the bounds of its genre. In the history of the club, we've seen 11 superhero movies, eight of which were from this year, with two of those winning Best Picture. Being the third movie in the Unfortunate Wolverine trilogy, and chronologically the finale in the mixed bag of X-Men movies, this is a film that shouldn't be as good as it is. But it manages to break the mold with violent, gory action sequences and raw, exciting performances, perfectly capping off Hugh Jackman's iconic portrayal of a flawed but relatable superhero. Wolverine is just one of those characters that you can't see being played by anyone else, and it's, all, and it's so rewarding that he was able to go out with a bang. Our sixth nominee is Logan. Our November Best Picture belongs in its own category, along with Mulholland Drive, called What the Hell is Happening? From the mind of cinema's most mind-bending auteur, it's a complex yet passionate story of one man dedicated to his craft who will go by any means to put on the greatest play that the world has ever seen, even if it puts stress on the relationships of his loved ones. With a film that plays with metafiction, surrealism, and just the right amount of humor, we found ourselves inexplicably drawn to its brash take on life, death, and the pursuit of fulfillment. Our seventh nominee is Snecty, New York. Our January and February Best Picture is probably the most popular one here, and rightfully so, as most people would name it their favorite movie of the last 15 years. Stemming from the complex mind of Christopher Nolan, this movie is an adventure, a sci-fi, and an existential drama all in one. As an absolutely stacked cast of characters explore what it would look like to plant an idea in someone's mind without them knowing, and the consequences that could result from it. It's a masterclass in tension, action, world building, and how a filmmaker uses their craft to keep us on the edge of our seats. Our eighth nominee is Inception. Our next best picture is the greatest movie ever made, including The Godfather, Parasite, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and even Speed Racer. It's an action adventure, sci-fi fantasy, romance thriller that's also a comedy and a family drama disguised as a kung fu movie. Among our members on Letterboxd who have seen it, it has consistently received five stars with only one four and a half star rating, and sits in nine people's favorites list. It's got something for everyone who sees it, and while it deals with themes of nihilism, death, and generational trauma, it has a heart big enough for the whole universe, and is the film equivalent of a cure for cancer. Featuring the talents of kung fu queen Michelle Yeoh and the first screen appearance of Indiana Jones actor, Kiko Kwan in 20 years. Our ninth nominee is Everything Everywhere All at Once. And last but not least, we have our final Best Picture nominee, yet another masterpiece from the mind of Brad Bird. This nominee soared through our runner-up Best Picture bracket to be given a second chance at winning the gold. It's a story that teaches us valuable life lessons about following your dreams, loving what you do, and learning to be humble. In an unforgiving world, this movie shows us that great art can change us and the way we think. And even more so, that a great artist can come from anywhere, even a small film club at Clemson University. So if you ever feel down, just remember, anyone can cook. Ladies and gentlemen, our final nominee is Ratatouille. Man, that's hard to pick from. That's like seven of my favorites. I know, this year was stacked. We watched a lot of great movies. But also some bad ones like Stalker. And King Kong. Kong? Yeah, but let's not talk about that. You ready to present some awards? Showtime. All right, first up, we have Best Directing. Directing is arguably the hardest job on a film set. You have to work with all the departments, take notes from the studio, and have everything planned out to the last detail. But at its core, directing is about figuring out where your camera goes, where your actors go, ensuring you get the best performance possible out of all of them, and doing your best to communicate your vision of the script to everyone. Our nominees range from the directors of massive blockbusters to the finest filmmakers that Art House Cinema has to offer, 
and each of them have effortlessly worked to perfect their craft through the movies we watched. For best directing, our first honorable mention goes to Brad Bird for The Incredibles. And our second honorable mention goes to Christopher Nolan for Inception. Our final two come down to Akira Kurosawa for Akiru and the Daniels for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Director goes to Akira Kurosawa for Akiru. Congratulations to Mr. Kurosawa on an impeccably made film that moved us all to tears and reminded us not to take life for granted. And now, Gabe will present Best Screenplay. A movie is nothing without its script. It's the place where all the characters, settings, relationships, and action of the film are born, and the first step in making a film. Getting a story and characters together is difficult as it is, but putting them in challenging situations that make our audience invested in what's happening on screen can be near impossible. But for our nominated screenwriters, it seems to come second nature as they are able to write compelling stories that immerse us into the movies as if we were there. Our first honorable mention goes to The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once. And our second honorable mention goes to Brad Bird for The Incredibles. Our final two nominees are Charlie Kaufman for Synecdoche, New York, and Jordan Peele for Get Out. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Screenplay goes to Charlie Kaufman for Synecdoche, New York. Congratulations to Mr. Kaufman on one of the most intricate but emotional screenplays we've ever seen put to screen. Next up, we have Best Cinematography. Take it away, Ross! Thanks, Gage. Even though directing and screenwriting are the building blocks to a great movie, cinematography is one of the few aspects that is singularly unique to cinema. The instincts required to frame, light, move, and color a shot all while enlisting an emotional response from your audience are incredibly difficult to attain, but our nominees seem to use them as if they're a sixth sense. It's a gargantuan task, but our nominated cinematographers are able to accomplish it effortlessly. For cinematography, our first honorable mention goes to Benoit Deby for a climax, and our second honorable mention goes to Victoria Storaro for Apocalypse Now. Our final two nominees come down to Greg Frazier for The Batman and Sven Nyqvist for Persona. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Cinematography goes to Greg Frazier for The Batman. Congratulations to Mr. Frazier for composing some of the coolest shots we've ever seen in a superhero movie and showing Dario Argento how you're really supposed to use the color red. And now, we move on to composing. Without a doubt, composing has been one of our most hotly debated categories over the past year, as the movies we've watched have contained some of the most iconic film scores of all time. But whether it's a shark in the water, or a skeleton singing about Christmas lights, the scores we've heard over the past year have touched us in ways we can never describe with words. Our first honorable mention goes to Joe Hisaishi for The Wind Rises. And our second honorable mention goes to both Hans Zimmer for The Lion King and Michael Giacchino for The Incredibles. Our final two nominees are Hans Zimmer for Inception and John Williams for Star Wars. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Composing goes to John Williams for Star Wars. Congratulations to Mr. Williams for composing the most iconic film score ever made and making a whole sequel trilogy tolerable. May the force be with you, King. Now, to finish off the first stretch of awards, 
we move on to best editing. While not necessarily the flashiest of categories, editing is no doubt one of the most essential elements of the filmmaking process, and is well deserving of the spotlight treatment, unlike some people who might believe it's not. Academy! <coughs> In the same boat of cinematography, editing is solely unique to film and uses the juxtaposition of images to move the story forward, keep the pacing tight, and ensure that we can follow along with what's happening on screen. If you've ever used Premiere Pro, this one's for you. But don't worry, we won't crash. Editing, our first honorable mention goes to Ula Ri for a persona, and our second honorable mention goes to Dorota Kopiela and Justina Wersinska for Loving Vincent. Our final two are down to Lee Smith for Inception and Paul Rogers for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Editing goes to Paul Rogers for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Congratulations to Mr. Rogers for some of the snappiest editing we've seen on the big screen in a long time. Before we continue voting, we'd like to take an opportunity to look back at the short films we've made over the past year. And even though we believe that all our films have their own individual merits, we'd like to highlight the two that we're the most proud to have worked on. For our first one, I got the opportunity to direct a story that I had thought of as far back as last spring. I really wanted to make an action movie with stunts and fast camera work that would be fun to make and fun to watch. Although it took a while to make it, and it presented its own set of challenges, it was worth it when the Reedy Reels Film Festival in Greenville decided to screen it as part of their student film selection. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Directions to Doom. Hey man. Hey, I'm looking for this bar called the Lucy Goosey. Uh, I'd look it up, but my phone's dead, so. Uh, is that the, the Dr. Seuss themed uh, bakery in Midtown? No, I think that's the Susie Moosey. I'm looking for like the avian paraphernalia bar. There's a goose outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I think it's three stoplights down, take a right, two doors, uh, and then we'll be on the right. Okay. All right, I got it. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so he said three lights down, two doors to the right, and then I'm there. God, I hope Bobby got us a table. I'm just sitting outside with a goose talking.
Sorry, some guy was chasing me. Whoa, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm crazy. You're the one who's been chasing me. I, I tried to flag you down, all right? It's not my fault you took off. What do you mean? I, I gave you bad directions. Uh, it's the left at the third stoplight, not a right. Are you serious? I think so. I, I think it's a left. Uh, I guess that doesn't really matter at this point. And then I just started thinking about my family and, you know, how they would be without me. And I think that really drove me to just keep running. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I... Can I be honest with you? Of course. I mean, now we're bonded. So, I... Whenever I was chasing you, and this might sound weird, but I was thinking about your family too. Because I... I mean, it was that thing where I was like, He's not gonna end up in the right place. I don't know if he's supposed to meet his family there, for one. Yeah, and I could have died in the wrong place. Oh, you very well could have. Yeah. I, I think I... From what you're saying, it seems like I was heading towards a very bad part I of I think it was the bowling alley. Oh, no, really? Yeah. So. I've seen that bowling alley on the news. Mm -hmm. Only horrible things. Murders. Yeah, I mean, that's where I generally hang out, to be clear, but you would not fit in. That was a lot of fun to make, and I'm glad it came out the way it did. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe there's a sequel in the works. Might be. Only time will tell. But for now, let's get back to the awards. Up next, we have Best Written Character. A big part of the reason we watch movies is because more often than not, we see parts of ourselves in the characters on screen. Whether it's an anxious teenager trying to survive middle school, or an Asian mom trying to do what's best for her family, each of these nominees showed us that even though challenges arise from the problems we face every day, adversity is really just an opportunity to be better and rise above everything that stands in our way. Each of these characters asked the question, if they can do it, why not us? Our first honorable mention goes to Katie Mitchell from The Mitchells vs. The Machines. And our second honorable mention goes to Mr. Watanabe, from Ikiru. Our final two nominees are Caden Cotard from Synecdoche, New York, and Logan from, well, Logan. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Written Character goes to Caden from Synecdoche, New York. Congratulations to Caden and Mr. Charlie Kaufman for bringing to life an eccentric, but well-meaning artist who warns us of the dangers of obsession and shows us how art imitates life. Up next is Best Sequence. Even though it's not a category you typically see at your Hollywood award show, here at CRD, we like to recognize the sequences in films that left us speechless, brought us to tears, or just left us frozen in awe. From a superhero mom saving her kids from incoming missiles aboard a jet, to the God of Thunder bringing the lightning, as Led Zeppelin roars in the background. The best sequences are the ones that stay with us long after the movie has ended. For best sequence, our first honorable mention goes to Ego Eats Ratatouille from Ratatouille. And our second honorable mention goes to Opening Slummo from Melancholia. 
Our final two nominees come down to No Blinking from The Master and Storing Omaha Beach from Saving Private Ryan. And the 2022 Golden Reel for Best Sequence goes to Storming Omaha Beach from Saving Private Ryan. Congratulations to Saving Private Ryan and Mr. Steven Spielberg for crafting a sequence that left us paralyzed as we were watching and gave us a painfully authentic look at the reality of war, and by extension, a renewed appreciation for those that have served. And now, we go to Gage for Best Ending. The ending is arguably the most important part of the screenplay to get right. It's what we as the audience leave with and what stays in our heads hours after we've left the theater. Good ones can make us smile, great ones can move us to tears, and perfect ones can change the way we think about ourselves and the world. If movies are a meal, then the ending is the dessert. Our first honorable mention goes to Inception. And our second honorable mention goes to Seven Samurai. Our final two nominees come down to Logan and Poetry. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Ending goes to Poetry. Congratulations to Poetry on an incredibly emotional ending that left us in tears up until the last frame. Now that we've made our way through a few more categories, we'd like to highlight one more film that we made this past year. For this one, I got the chance to return to the directing chair and work with one of our new members, Ella, on a story she created. It starts off a normal night of two couples meeting for dinner, but as usual, we got to put our own CRD spin on it to make something interesting and just the right amount of bizarre. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Couple Trouble. Where did they say they were from again? I think out of town. Uh, he didn't mention it at the bar, so I don't know. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hey! Hey! Hi. Hi. How's it going? How are y'all? We're so happy you could make it. Come on in. <laughs> Uh, well, sit down, make yourself at home. I poured us some wine. Cheers to new friends and new experiences. you've been together four no, weeks in three days been on a couple of dates um what about you two? Oh, i don't know it feels like ages probably even longer <laughs> oh that's the chicken farm oh, you don't have to get up uh yeah. robbie and i've got it so are you excited yeah, it's been so long since I had a home-cooked meal. No, I'm not getting busy with Larry. <laughs> Larry? <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude, we went over this. You, me, Lisa, Rachel, more holes than you can count. Okay? <laughs> We're talking swing name. Uh, wait, wait, you're serious? Yeah. I mean, this is something we've wanted for ages. I'm not even wearing my sex socks. Dude, I have extra. Robbie, can I speak to you for a moment? What the hell happened at that bar? Well, I may have insinuated that us and them would have sex. Sex? Why would you not tell me I this? I thought he was joking. Uh, we went into a bunch of, like, internet rabbit hole, like, Sex and, you know, government and pro... Pro! Shh. Hey, are you guys alright? Think it's getting cold. 
Do you have garlic in this? No, it's my own special seasoning. It's out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like paprika? No, stop. I'm sorry, this just... <laughs> we just started dating, and we were looking for a couple friends, and <laughs> now you guys are trying to seduce us with chicken. No, I'm sorry, this just isn't for us. Yeah, I'm with her. This is just too much, and I don't think we're ready to handle it. I think we're gonna head out. Wait. Do you guys have to-go boxes? I still can't believe we thought of that ending. Those late night writing sessions always bring out the best in us, don't they? Without a doubt. Ready to get back in awards? Oh, you betcha, buddy boy. Let's do it. As someone finishing up their degree in animation, I can say without a doubt it's arguably the greatest art form at cinema's disposal. And even though animated movies are often neglected at award shows, here at CRD we love animation with all our heart which makes sense considering roughly a fourth of our Best Picture nominees and winners are animated. Nevertheless, we thought it only right to shine some more light on these films and give recognition to the artists that have worked tirelessly to make them. For animated feature, our first honorable mention goes to Grave of the Fireflies, and our second honorable mention goes to Ratatouille. Our final two nominees come down to The Incredibles and The Wind Rises, both expertly made films with love pouring out of every frame. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Animated Feature goes to The Incredibles. Congratulations to this childhood classic on an outstanding film, and kudos to Pixar for continually pushing the media forward, even if it is one of their lower tier. Let's be honest. Dude, we're filming. Are you serious? Right now? Keep my, my favorite movie out your Are you freaking serious? Mouth. Dude, really? It was a joke. Like, come on, man. Keep we're, my oh favorite movie. Oh my god. Out okay, I will. Out I will again. stop talking. All right, okay? Fine. You win. Oh my god. I. On to international feature, I guess. One of our favorite parts of CRD is the emphasis we put on watching movies from different cultures. Whether they're from Japan, Sweden, Spain, or Canada, there's something about international movies that just hit different from ones in the U.S. And it's beneficial to see different perspectives from people all around the world and understand how their movies reflect their experiences. Our first honorable mention goes to Persona, and our second honorable mention is RAW! Directed by Julia Ducournau. Anyways, our uh, final two nominees come down to Climax and Ikiru. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best International Feature goes to Climax. <laughs> Congratulations. 
Congratulations to Gaspar Noé on a truly twisted but nevertheless entertaining movie that showed us that some movies are better watched alone, even though we had a live viewing for it. Congrats again, and long live Tito. And now, on to the people who make the damn movies. The actors. In all seriousness, after writing, planning, and figuring out how a movie's going to be made, nothing can happen without a talented group of performers to breathe life into the characters. It's the actor's responsibility to find the motivation behind each thing a character says and each action they take, whether good, bad, or somewhere in the middle. And while some actors take center stage and others are relegated to the background, it is impossible to deny that each nominee from these categories didn't steal the scene they were in. Whether leading or supporting, a great performance speaks for itself. And there's no doubt in our minds that these performers brought their absolute A-game to the screen. First up, we have performance in a male supporting role. Our first honorable mention goes to Gary Oldman in Leon the Professional. And our second honorable mention goes to Ki Hoi Kwan in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Our final two nominees come down to Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs and Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Master. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Performance in a Male Supporting Role goes to Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. Congratulations to Sir Anthony on an unhinged performance that terrifies you with his mere presence. And I really wish you would DM me back. Next up, we have performance in a female supporting role. Our first honorable mention goes to Helena Bonham Carter in Fight Club. And our second honorable mention goes to Zoe Kravitz in The Batman. Our final two nominees come down to Amy Adams in The Master and Carrie Mulligan in Shane. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Performance in a Female Supporting Role goes to Amy Adams in The Master. Congratulations to Amy Adams on her second Golden Reel. She now has a Golden Reel for performances in a leading and a supporting role. Funnily enough, Amy Adams actually lost to Helena Bonham Carter in the monthly Zoomies but managed to get a second chance after winning our runner-up bracket. And now we have performance in a male leading role. Our first honorable mention goes to Philip Seymour Hoffman in Synecdoche, New York. And our second honorable mention goes to Hugh Jackman in Logan. Our final two nominees come down to Joaquin Phoenix in Joker and Joaquin Phoenix in The Master. Wonder who's going to get it. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Performance in a Male Leading Role goes to Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. <laughs> Congratulations to Joaquin for showing us the downtrodden origins of the most famous supervillain of all time. Heath Ledger also won a Golden Reel for playing the same character last year. Technically, too, since he also won Best Overall Performance, but who's counting? And lastly, to round out the main acting categories, we have performance in a female leading role. Our first honorable mention goes to Natalie Portman in Leon the Professional. And our second honorable mention goes to Tilda Swinton in We Need to Talk About Kevin. Our final two nominees come down to Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once and Yoon Jong Hee in Poetry. And our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Performance in a Female Leading Role goes to Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once. <laughs> Congratulations to Miss Yo for her outstanding work as a fearless traveler of the multiverse and for showing us that at the end of the day, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. Now, 
we move on to the final acting award of the night. While we love celebrating our actors and the fine performances they've given, we like even more so to recognize the best of the best and commemorate those who have been noted for giving the best performance of each of their respective months over the past year. The goal and reel for overall performance is used to recognize the one performer from the last year who has outshined their competition and given a performance that is truly untouchable. We've seen some fantastic acting, but only one actor can join the ranks of the Golden Gods. Our first honorable mention goes to Philip Seymour Hoffman in Synecdoche, New York. And our second honorable mention goes to Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Our final two nominees come down to Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs and Joaquin Phoenix in Joker. Who will win in this battle between psychopaths? Let's find out. In our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Overall Performance goes to Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Sir Anthony, you are a titan among actors, and we thank you for your contributions to the cinematic arts. Hey, man. I'm sorry about before. Can we still be friends? I, I mean, yeah, it's okay. I, I shouldn't have been joking. I mean, I knew it was your favorite movie, and I still said no way, so that wasn't cool with me. Are we okay? Absolutely. Um, hey, to round out and, you know, finish up before this picture, you want to take one more look back at the fun we've had making movies over the past year? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. Hello, here I am, Hi. first day of production. Hello. This is all the people we got today. We are setting up the ritual room right now, uh, getting a head start on that, uh, as our actors aren't available today. We have here our fog machine. We just set this up. Look how cool it is. All right, press the on button. It works. What's up? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy boy. Hey, buddy boy. Yep, happy birthday. Here we are on the set of Ronnie. Like, once again, uh, this is our first day shooting. Uh, we've got our tripod here. We have ridden the room of the color red, except for these posters, which we won't film. Uh, except for this bad boy right here, because he's real dangerous. Fucking ten. <laughs> Can you say that without the F word? Getting fucking fucked. <laughs> Get it? Getting tatted. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we always have another. Secret Santa. That's what's going on. Secret Santa never comes. It did not. Nothing. It did not even a little bit. <laughs> we might need hairspray for this. Should you say we? Because they're both putting it on. Now that we've been, uh, what do we think? Uh, I think that we'll... Now that we have the ceremonial robes ready, the ritual can commence. Now that we've been dressed in the ceremonial robes, the ritual can commence. I'm going to have to see how that looks, and it'll probably mm -hmm. look great. Oh, I messed it up again. That's perfect. No, it looks like an extra. It's like Ronnie. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> like you're doing a practice round. Keep going, keep going. Beautiful. <laughs> That's it. So, alright. Let's do that. New day, new method. Alright. Um, you can just take this off all the way. Very careful. Come on, Lord. Oh, there. Oh, what the fuck is happening? Not at all. 
Nothing. I swear. Wait, that is ready to draw on me. I, I, wait, ah, uh, it. I can see this stuff wanting to come off, but it's. Maybe you just have the wrong longer. <laughs> Maybe. Not too late. Wait, there it goes. What the fuck? It just fell off. It just fell off. Go, 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 go. Did it work? Woo! Yeah. Somewhat. Looks like shit, but it worked. Does <laughs> it look like shit? It, it's very much just plastic on my chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little sticker. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it did not help. Uh, oh, God. Oh, no. It destroyed it. <laughs> no. Um, Viv and Caroline, are y'all cool with drawing on Sean? Take two. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? Absolutely. Yes! It did. yes! <laughs> Woo! 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 And action. So we've hit a little bump in the road, uh, more like a blockade, because CMF, the film festival we were planning on submitting our short to, is not doing it this year. Uh, we just found that out. Uh, so we're currently looking into other film festival options. Look at this Florida one. I'm getting regular burn. <laughs> 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 okay, so on the screen. So it says early bird deadline and regular bird deadline. So we're obviously submitting to Florida. I can't get over that regular bird. Regular bird, bird deadline. deadline. <laughs> They're so silly. They are. They got a personality. They do. All right. Here we are on day nine of production. We're doing some reshoots with uh, Sean here. Just a little continuity fixing with the editing. Uh, very grateful to him for being a trooper and doing that for us. Here we are, taking some reshoots. We're just waiting on this AC to turn off so we can get some good audio going. All right, it is currently 11.55, and we are uploading right now. We're at 67%. Don't embarrass me like this. Uh, this isn't cool. We're cutting it real close. Look, we have our film club right here because we were supposed to have a film discussion at this time. They wanted we to stay. Did. They we did have a film discussion while we were, you know, finishing up touches and everything, but you know, they just wanted to see and make sure we got our video uploaded in time. And it's uh, at sixty nine percent right now. Nice. <laughs> so, doing real good. We just entered the last final minute of the day. We have eighty four. We have eighty five percent of it uploaded. Uh, I'm just gonna film a live reaction of all of us waiting for the last minute. Also, like, we have two backup festivals, and this one was like, you know, what you like about life. So, if it doesn't get in, that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Yeah, we just wanted it for the regular bird deadline. We wanted the regular bird deadline, we're like, tomorrow? <laughs> Hell yeah! Alright, 88%. We have five seconds, and it's approaching 90%. We're good. We're gonna make up. Oh, we didn't make it. <laughs> okay, 99. All oh, 100%. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Con congrats. Oh, it's processing. It's Hooray! processing. <laughs> so, scene 2B, take two. Yep. All right, actors ready. And action. Scene 2B, take three. Yep. And action.
right, scene seven G, take one, action. Well, it's been a pleasure going on this journey with you, Ross. Couldn't have asked for a better friend. I couldn't have asked for a better filmmaking partner at all. But yeah, uh, we love making movies. It's been a pleasure. And now, we have just one award left. The biggest one of the night. You ready to get into it? No. We have to, though. Alright, I guess we should. We, we, let's do it. Alright. <laughs> so, after going through the 13 previous categories, this is the summation of what those are all about. Each one, whether it be writing, editing, or cinematography, goes towards a final product that entrances our senses and loses us in total awe. Each one of these films is remarkable in its own way. There's no doubt about that. Each one shows us something that we love about life and argues that even though days get tough and time passes us by, cinema keeps us moving forward. It's our distinct honor to present each of these on behalf of Quentin Real Dialogue. Our first honorable mention goes to Synecdoche, New York. And our second honorable mention goes to Everything Everywhere All at Once. Our final two nominees come down to The Incredibles and The Wind Rises, which, as you'll remember, are our final two nominees in the Best Animated Feature category as well. You ready to do this? Yes, I am ready now. Okay, good to hear. Well, our 2022 Golden Reel for Best Picture goes to... Two, three. The, the Wind Rises! <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Miyazaki, on making a film that is phenomenal, to say the least, and life-changing to say, I think, the very most, honestly. Um, with all that said, uh, the Golden Reels has come to an end this year. Gage, thanks for all the help with all this, and thank you for everything over the past year with helping me run this club and just being a part of Clemson Real Dialogue. Thank you, Ross, for carrying this club on your back, this broad, broad, muscular back. Uh, you've been a great host as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, even though times do have to come to an end, our time as presidents of Clemson Real Dialogue has reached that point. But no fear, cinema, as we've said, keeps moving forward, and so we hope that you all continue to watch movies, continue to discover new films, go out there, continue to make new stuff, and just remember, the wind is rising, and with that, we must live. And as the wind rises, we must leave. Thank you for everything you've given us. And that's a wrap. Cool. Yeah. It quickly went from Sing Street to Life of Pi. <laughs> Anyone, I thought the whole time that he looked like Kevin Spacey. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Some consideration was given to replace the term rabbit with either jackadoodle 
or the lesser known nickname of Noodle Poodle. <laughs> Time. <laughs> All right, so someone guessed Zappy. <laughs> Bet you can guess who that was. I wonder I who has zero points now. That's <laughs> Answer was Tito. If Eugene had known Tito, he would have won. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna think about that for a while. Let come me on, change. come on. All right, send it right now. Send it right now. All right. I got Gage answered Andrew and Danny answered Michael. Okay. The answer is with Tito. I'm oh sorry. my god. There's no way Tito is a common name. So that knocks out all of your points from final trivia. I am so sorry to Danny and Gage. Does that mean Gage? So that brings both of you back. Gage, you're back to 9,900 points, and Danny, you're back to negative 1,300 points. I am so sorry. What is? How does? Wait, does that mean? Does that mean I win? This is I. This is so ironic that we got knocked out on Tito. I purposely made a Wait, question I knew It's not question. even a real answer. This Wait, perfectly that means that... And, oh my gosh, I am so happy right now. You have no clue. Does that mean I win because of as... This is the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god. You know. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> My last quote ever from Evelyn to Joy. Of all the places I could be, I just want to be here with you. Mm -hmm.